This week on Alley Pick, I'm doing a restoration on something really cool. In fact, my friend Shannon would say this is a killer piece. In fact, it's right over there. Let me show you. Here it is. Isn't this thing cool? It appears to be a factory parts cabinet of some kind. They painted the letter F at the top, which makes me think there was an A, B, C, D, E, maybe even more. These drawers are really cool. Let me show you a few of them. The great thing about this cabinet is that it didn't come from a library. It's not a card catalog, which means that the drawers don't have that slit on the bottom with that metal rod going along the length of the drawer. These are all storage drawers. In fact, I even found some parts from the factory still inside of them. The larger drawer at the bottom is missing some handles. I'll have to find some replacement knobs. I do have a couple of options, so I'll figure that out along the way. This thing is made out of solid oak. Now, my plan is to refinish it, to build or find a matching base for it, replace some of the missing handles, repair some chipped wood, and in the process, not just make this thing look like new, but better than new. Stick around if you wanna watch the transformation. This restoration is gonna require lots of sanding. I start by removing all of the drawers, as well as the nameplate from the Monroe Company, where I believe this cabinet came from. I did a little Googling on the Monroe name with this logo, but came up empty. I did, however, find out the manufacturer of the cabinet. On the side of several of the drawers was the name W.C. Heller & Company. I found out that they're a cabinet manufacturer still in business today. I tried to email them for information on this cabinet, but haven't heard back from them yet. I'm using some coarse sandpaper belts to get through this finish. It did gum up a couple of belts. To display the cabinet properly, it really needs to be up higher. It can't sit on the ground. I thought about making some beefy oak legs, but then I came across this metal base. I bought this at an estate sale, but back then it had a wooden top, which I used for another project. This base just might work. Now this bit is a challenging part, repairing the splits on the cabinet sides. I gotta figure out a way to fix this. I start by making a template of the missing shape and transposing that to a piece of oak. I cut out the shapes and angles in order to fit this gap. It takes a lot of back and forth on the bandsaw and belt sander, but eventually I get a piece that I'm happy with. A little glue and clamp to hold it in place. I do the same thing for the other large split. For the smaller splits in the middle, I cut a wedge, add glue, and then pound them in place. Once everything is dried, sanded, and stained, I think the damage will hardly be noticeable. For the top here, I'm using this wood filler. I love this stuff. It's soupier than regular wood filler, and it spreads easily. I bought it from Home Depot. It's usually meant for floors. So I'll apply it, let it dry, and then sand it off. For the back of the cabinet, all I do is pound in the nails that were a little loose and then apply a rust converter to the metal. The bulk of the work is gonna be with the drawers. The first couple handles were a bit difficult to remove, but by the time I got to drawer number 50, I was an expert. After taking off all the handles, I brought them to my buffing wheel where I cleaned off all the surface rust and painted them. The last repair that I need to make are the chips on the two drawers. I just finished the worst part of the job, sanding 50 drawers. I first sanded the fronts using the belt sander, then I grabbed some coarse sandpaper and sanded all four edges. Then I re-sanded using some fine sandpaper. I had to repair two of the drawers and now I get to have some fun, staining. After the stain dries, I use a tack cloth to remove any dust and then I give everything a coat of shellac. I'm not just using regular shellac, but something called a sanding sealer. This is shellac, but with the natural waxes removed. I think this is better for the subsequent coats of polyurethane to stick. I sand lightly with some 400 grit sandpaper after the shellac and between the coats of polyurethane. I don't need to sand at the end after the last coat of poly. If you did everything right, the last coat should be very smooth. 
I decided to use this metal base. So I cleaned off the rust with some fine sandpaper, then cleaned it off using some paint thinner. I then gave it a couple of coats with this Krylon paint and primer. I've been noticing that my Rust-Oleum spray seems to clog quite a bit. So I'm switching over to Krylon for a bit to see if there's any difference. I started this project a little over a month ago and I'm so glad that it's finally finished. It looks amazing. It's one of my favorite restorations. I'm about to take the cover off, but I am legally required to warn you that once you lay eyes on its beauty, you just might turn to stone. I hope that all my hard work on this project has earned your willingness to like and subscribe to Alley Picked. Until next time, I'll meet you in the alley.